Gotta be hurting. You gotta be hurting in the back right there. He's just flopping around on the ground like a fish right there. Like one of those bloops that you see in the uh, water levels of Super Mario Brothers. Just flopping <laughs> right around on the ground. You know, I was playing that for the Wii the other day, you know, the uh, old school version. That's very good. Come on, stop it. Oh, and a nice snap jab there by Crowbar. Crowbar again catching with those snap jabs. Referee Anthony Namal telling him to get out of the corner. He obliges. But now Crowbar now straight jack in the arm. And a nice snapmare takeover close to a snapmare driver. But nonetheless, Chrono Chris is down on the canvas and suffering in pain. Sebastian's in a lot of trouble. I'm surprised when he hit the ground, he didn't start blinking. You know, because just because he's taking so much damage. Chop to the pectoral region. Chops are back on the menu, and he follows it up with a forearm shiver. Irish whip. Crowbar looking for a move. And a nice leg layer. Beautifully done there by Sebastian Cruz. You know, I learned the hard way last month that like, when you're beating on somebody, you don't want to start smacking and punching a Puerto Rican kid in the face. You're only just you're only going to make him angry. Gets that Latin fire yeah. burning up inside of him. Now I have a question. Do you think uh, Sebastian Cruz can hit cruise control on Crowbar? I don't know. He's got a lot of that wiry muscle. I assume he could, you know. Just like you know, it's just like in those video games, like you're playing like, you know, double dragon and stuff. You're like that little guy can't pick up that giant barrel, then he picks up the giant barrel over his head, he knocks the bobo over with it. You know, that that could happen. Oh, Crowbar looking for a clothesline. And now Sebastian Cruz with a with a rapid forearm shiver that follows it up with a roaring elbow. Epa, and the crowd loves it here. Oh, but a kick right to the face just nullifies all the all the strikes. Sebastian Cruz just he looks, leveled. He looks like he's out on his knees there. He looks out. He got called right in the face with that kick. And now Crowbar with that huge cranium, that typewriter-sized cranium. And again, right on top of the head, the noggin of, of Sebastian Cruz. Crowbar hitting some Battletoads offense on Sebastian Cruz here. All big Battletoads. All big fists, all big headbutts. I'm waiting for you to throw out a Bucky O'Hare reference somewhere in there. Uh, you know, Bucky O'Hare didn't have much offense. He just, you know, went around firing his gun or anything. He starts shooting people with a gun. I'll, I'll say Bucky O'Hare whenever you want. Crowbar, the jumping back elbow, only gets to. You know, I think Crowbar's employing a lot of different offense than he normally does against Sebastian Cruz. And now... Well, didn't they meet once before and then uh, Sebastian won? Yeah, by dis yes, he did. He won by disqualification, I believe. Well, I guess he's just he's employing what he learned the last time. He's using some good uh, artificial intelligence here, too. Oh, my goodness. Good grief. That That's very unique out of Cruz's arsenal. Running off the apron and catching Crowbar with a, with a tornado DDT. That's got to even hurt a big man like Crowbar. He, he may have a hard head throwing headbutts, but, you know, when your head he meets that hardwood floor, you know, it's got to do some damage to you no matter what your head's made out of. You know, I was talking with Tristan Law last month about the effects of how hard that wooden floor is compared to the normal concrete. What is the difference with that? You know, well, I mean, there's no real given that wooden floor. You know, underneath that wooden floor, I mean, it is concrete, and like, it, it, you know, there's a foundation under there. Most people don't realize that. Like, there is absolutely no give hitting that wooden floor. And then over here, you got these uh, these tiles over here. This is even worse. Well, good thing he didn't go to the floor because that would hurt a lot. Close line from Chrono Chris as Crowbar was sat in the chair. And then now this is turned into a, this is degenerated into a brawl. You know, this is what Chrono, what the former Chrono Chris has to avoid. There's a cover. Seems like he'd be going more to Crowbar's element for him with him on the outside, but he seemed to handle himself pretty well. He's uh, adapting very well. He's uh, taking to that street fight style. And that's one thing about, about Sebastian Cruz. He can adapt. Uh-oh, electric chair maybe here. And he does. Beautiful electric chair drop, beautifully done by the demonic destruction of ice and Sebastian Cruz looked out. His eyes were rolling back in his head. His head might have hit that, that canvas extremely hard. And that didn't help things. Nice side slam there by Crowbar. And Cruz kicks out a two from the count from referee Anthony D'Amato. Crowbar looks really frustrated as he thought that could have got the job done. Like we said, you know, he is extremely resilient. Uh, a lot of hit points on uh, Chrono Cruz. It's very hard to keep him down. There's those snap jabs Crowbar was utilizing earlier See, he's on. making a mistake of punching this kid in the face, making him angry. And now he's a double Greco-Roman no, Greco knuckle lock. Let's say that five times fast. Had more, head had more headbutts from this. Look, going back to that Battletoads offense, it's a shame his head doesn't get bigger when he hits it, just like, you know, Rash and Battletoads. And now Crowbar going right back. Right back now, he was looking for a street jacket earlier, and now he has another one locked him, this time with his knee put right into the lumbar region of, of Sebastian Cruz. He's revving up on him like Excite Bike right now. Look at that. <laughs> Excite Bike. Hell of a game, by the way. I actually like that game. But right, but right now, 
Cruz is locked in a surfboard. Crowbar's got to make sure his shoulders are not on the canvas. He could be counted out for a three. And now, and now he has more of an X lock. Fully locked on here. Straight jacket submission. Fully applied. Cruz might have to tap out. He's going to pop his head off any second now. But somehow, some way, Cruz got to the bottom rope, and now Crowbar's making him pay. I, I I know you're feeling like proverbially you're feeling it as he's getting choked. You just caught there. I that's got to be a lot of men to be on top of the back of, of Sebastian Cruz. Oh, definitely. You know when you when you're getting stunned in your neck, there's a couple pounds in your neck is gonna make you choke. But then he weighs what 250 pounds, Crowbar. I mean that's a lot of weight. Those ropes have some give, but you know I mean you get choked by it. there's a metal cable inside there choking you. And now he just smacked him right in the mush. Crowbar now has him up. Oh, I thought he was going to have him think about it there. Cruz, uh, Cruz tried getting down. Crowbar said, no way, Jose, and takes him down with a vertical suplex. All that blood just rushed to the head. And that, unfortunately, is one of the uh, negatives of only weighing like 100 pounds. People can pick you up pretty easily. Crowbar getting frustrated. He just wants a pinfall victory, and Cruz is not obliging. D'Amato again counting two for the third time. Crowbar getting very frustrated. And there's a scoop slam. We've seen this before from Crowbar. Splash Mountain out of the corner. How much does he have left in the tank? It's just like, you know, it's kind of like Sebastian Cruz must have been back his knees like in Metroid, finding those reserve energy tanks. Just when his thing goes down to zero, it's like, because right back up to 100. He's knocked him down like so many times where I thought he was out, but he keeps coming back. Granted, the main character in Metroid is a girl, but you get my point. I get your point exactly, you know. He actually does kind of run in Metroid. Just keeps, he keeps kicking a beat and a beat and a beat and just keeps fighting. Was that a good save? Yeah, it was close. Okay, good. I'm trying. As we all know in Metroid, the Metroids are actually the little creatures, little jellyfish creatures. The main character's name is Samus Aaron, but you know, I wouldn't expect you to know all this stuff, John. <laughs> There's too much, it's too much overload old school video games right now. But right now, Chris is on the floor. He got tossed like a paper out of the ring like the paper boy threw into a window. Oh, video game reference. Okay, I'll give you that one, definitely. Paper boy, definitely a good old school game, both on Nintendo and in the arcade. Oh, it looks like he's in a... Oh, good grief! Run on that plastic table! And that's way more effective than the wooden sister! Because the wooden table might have actually broken, whereas the plastic table, it's just all your face hitting plastic. Right now, Sebastian Cruz while writhing in pain on the outside of the ring, and the referee might have to <laughs> throw this match out but instead, Crowbar breaks up the 10. He doesn't want to lose by counter or disqualification this time. He wants to go to a decisive finish. He wants to prove that he can beat up this kid, that every, he seems to get all these victories all over the place. Crowbar wants to put an end to this vein right now. Cruz now tossed in the ring again like a piece of paper. Crowbar, double leg drop. Double legs right across the pecs. That is a lot of abuse to take. It is a lot of abuse. I can't imagine. I, Sebastian might take the month off next month with all the abuse he's taken. We may have to see a hiatus. Nutcracker sweep from Crowbar. And you, I think you might be right here. Cruz has taken way too much. He's too been much hit in the head. He's been hitting the neck. He's hitting the back. Hit him in the chest. Hit him in the groin. Hit him in the stomach. I mean, what part of Sebastian Cruz's body has Crowbar not targeted in this match? And there's a chop to the pecs, and Crowbar again going right back to work, this time with a, with a simple headlock. And you know, I hear this from a lot of wrestlers that I've done commentary here with in the BWO. That side headlock, the rear chin lock, is so simple, but it's very effective as it makes you exude a lot of energy, I hear. Yeah, just, just to stay normal in that. You know, that we, for, forget getting out of it. Just to stay from passing out, it takes a lot of energy just in that rear chin lock. And it looks like Sebastian might have passed out here. But going back to Crowbar's strategy in this match, he's taking out every single part of Sebastian Cruz's body, not unlike in Castlevania 2 when Simon Belmont has to go around Transylvania collecting the remaining body parts of Dracula to destroy it. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, I'm going to take your word for that. Exactly. But Chris might, Cruz might be out here. He's, uh, but he somehow has enough reserve. He's got enough left, enough left in the tanks. To let somehow me, survive this. Let me ask the question everybody wants to know the answer to. How was he Chrono Chris if his name was Chris, but now his name's Sebastian? Is his name Sebastian and Chris, or is it Chris, or is it I, Sebastian? I think it's the artist formerly known as Chrono Chris, Sebastian Cruz type deal. I'm still trying to differentiate. I, I don't understand. But now Chris now with those snap jabs. Chop to the pecs. I don't think he wants to go strike for strike with a man like Crowbar, especially with all the punishment he's been dealing with. Well, we've, we've seen that Sebastian can take a lot of shots to the head. So maybe, maybe he can. Maybe he can be the only man in BWO that can do that. Corbin now looking for that mind bender, but Cruz countered and catches him with a DDT. 
a last act of desperation there by Sebastian Cruz as Crowbar is now writhing in pain on the canvas from that DDT. Looks like we're coming up to the moment of truth here. If Sebastian Cruz can get up around the same time as Crowbar, he does have a fighting chance to maybe turn the tide in this match, I would think. Referee up to the count of seven. Now he's up to eight. This match could be in draw. Nice jaw jacker there from Cruz. Falls it up with a neck breaker. Nicely done. He might have learned that from you, Sheridan. Oh, oh, oh. I hit him with that last month. I was very angry. I was very angry that he would steal that from me. And then he falls it up with a salsa leg drop. It only gets two. This going to take a lot more than that to put down the demonic destruction device. Irish whip. No reversal. Cruise up and over. There's a backsplash in the corner. He falls up. He just threw himself like a torpedo right into the body of Crowbar. Like a cannonball from the video game Rampart. Right in... Actually, that's Super Nintendo. Shame on you, Sheridan. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for doing that, people. Sorry to all my fans out there for making a Super Nintendo reference. I know everybody's disturbed. Sean Sheridan actually played an SNES game. I can't believe it. But right now, Chris might be sent, might be sent for cruise control. Too weakened. Just oh. too much of a weakened state. Oh, what a counter as he went under. Crowbar caught him with a rib breaker and now has him up on his shoulders in a fireman's carry. D V D Death Valley Driver. This match has been going on for what? An hour and a half now? This is incredible. This is this is one of the longest matches I've ever seen. These athletes really putting it all on the line. Fantastic. And now he's raking the eyes. The referee's got to get in there. The eyes may be the only part of Sebastian Cruz's body not fully affected in this match by Crowbar's offense. You know, I'm not going to lie. If it went to a longer contest like we are expecting right now, like you stated earlier, you know, I think I thought it would have been in Chrono Chris for the endurance factor. But right now, he looks like he's reeling and Crowbar's just warming up. Irish went, no, Cro Chrono Chris went under. Looking for a Hooray Karana. Oh, he's blocking it. And Crowbar's got him up in the air. Ali oop. Oh, no. Blocked. Cruz counter. Boot right to the mush. What's going on here? Might be looking for a victory roll. He got him. He got After him. All out a victory roll. Incredible. It, it, it all comes down to basic wrestling at the end. After all those punches, all that devastating offense. Maybe Crowbar just wasn't expecting the match to end that way. Was not expecting a classic NWN Fire fans, you right remember these two guys that I got for guests right now. They were with us not too long ago. I'm going to bring them in right now. They are Pyro and Cash to Hoods. Welcome back, fellas. Welcome back. Welcome back. See, it's been a long time since these two boys from the ghetto were back in the NWA on fire. But matter of fact, we got something to say so you can step out the way. You see, we were here a year ago. We were running through everybody in this company. When it came time for us to get our shot at the titles, this company, the office, ducked, dodged, and pushed us right out of the company. You believe that? See, just like my boy Pyro said, the office didn't want two hoodlums representing their company as the tag team champs. But now we're meaner, more hood, and more ghetto than ever. And nobody's going to tell us what to do. We're coming here to take our shots. So all you other tag teams in the back are going to learn one valuable lesson. You either going to get down or lay down. The tag team champs are here. Up next, fans, you're going to see the Dream Team as they take on the Minutemen. Well, T, here we go. Two newcomers to NWA on fire, the Minutemen. Yeah, they like pink and black, don't they? they? Oh, yeah, pink and black must be a real popular color. I tell you, that one with the sunglasses on doesn't look too friendly, does he? I don't think either of them do. No, they don't. Look at this. Well, they bring a mirror to the ring they so they can look at each other. They bring a mirror to the ring. Boy, I tell you. Well, two new newcomers here in the NWA on fire, new tag team. The Minutemen. I really don't have much to say about them because well, I don't know much about them. All I can say is that one of my favorite alternative bands of the mid-80s, the underground bands, was the band called The Minutemen. Uh-huh. But they're not D that's not D-Boone in the ring, so we won't go.